consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Red Brick Media. High quality CDs, DVDs, lectures, khutbah, conferences and Quran recitations. All revenue generated supports our dawah work. Supported by visiting our store. You can now purchase directly from our site www.redbrickmedia.co.uk In Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu and Astain, who and Astagfiro, when Ruth will be lahim in Shururi and Fusina was a Yati Amalina, may Yahdihilla who fell a mudil lala, Wama Yudlil fell a hadiala. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة When you first arrive in Mecca for Hajj when you see all the people from different parts of the world speaking different languages you realize the variety and the differences amongst the Muslims. At the same time also you see certain things that make you sad. Sometimes you see Muslims tossing things on the ground even though the rubbish bin is just next door next to them. And you see people pushing others around. And then you start to wonder, is this how the Muslims are? Is this the state and the condition of the Muslim Ummah? And you wonder to yourself, when is this going to change? When is when are the Muslims going to unite? When are the Muslims going to be again strong like they were before? You start to wonder. And that was exactly the, what was going through my mind. I was with my mother in Hajj a couple of years ago. And they were digging areas for construction as you know right now. There's a lot of construction going on. So, we came a little bit late to the masjid. And a little bit late, I mean an hour and a half, or an hour and a half before the khutbah. But when it's right before hajj, if you get there, if you go there less than two hours, you're not going to go in the masjid. So we were outside, right outside the masjid, close to the construction area. And all of a sudden, we saw people trying to jump over the fences, jump over the barriers. Why? Because they were looking for shade. Because on the other side, they saw that there was shade. And so there were some people hopping over. And then the police started to come to try to prevent them. And there was total chaos. In fact, I was so afraid. I told my mother, I said, let's move. Let's try to get away from this place. For I fear a stampede might occur. There was so much chaos. And then you start to wonder, is this how the Muslims are again? Why can't we just obey that sign that says danger? And there are deep pits, construction area, it's dangerous. But people were still jumping and the police were pu pushing back and forth. And then something happened. At the, on that day, there were approximately 3 million people, everyone coming to Mecca getting ready for Hajj, just a few days before Hajj. Three million people and there was total chaos right in front of me and then a, a, and a miracle occurred. The Imam, Abdurrahman al-Sudais, 
Rahimahullah, he got up on the minbar and you can hear his voice. He said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When he said it, there was total silence. All the people that were pushing, they were all of a sudden, they all sat down and then there was as if you can hear a pin drop around you because everybody just sat down and all that commotion just stopped. And then when prayer began, he said, Allahu Akbar, three million people all at once, they're making ruku and sujood and standing up in straight lines. Even though there was just total chaos just right before that, what made them change? What happened? It was La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar that brought all of these people together. And then you say, you know what, this ummah has hopes. Look how organized we are. And you start to realize, you know what, you cannot get 3,000 people to do this, even if you had the biggest, the best drill instructor in the world, without La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Three million people cannot in less than 10 seconds, line up in total straight rows. And then you say, you know what? There is hope for this ummah. But you know where the change has to happen? The change has to occur within ourselves. We as Muslims, we ourselves have to change within ourselves. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah will not change what's in the people until they change what's in themselves. And so we have just finished the month of Ramadan, the month of change. And so we should be changed right now. What kind of change? I don't want a temporary change. We have to work for a permanent change within ourselves. And let's start. Let's start with what? What do we start with? When we speak about change, let me, let me tell you just one thing and I'm going to focus on that during this khutbah. What we should change. Of course, the Qur'an and the Sunnah does not need to be changed. It is the same Qur'an, it is the same Sunnah, the words of the Prophet wasallam has been preserved by the great scholars of Islam. And the miracle of the Qur'an is still with us. The exact words that were revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recited in front of Abu Bakr and Umar and the other companions, they are the exact same words that we hear in prayer all the time. So what has changed? The Qur'an and the Sunnah hasn't changed. The thing that has changed and why we are in this state is we have changed in how we respond to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. We have to change in how we respond to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And if we can do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will again, will unite the Muslims and unite the Ummah and will bring Barakah again to our families and to our communities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu stajeebu lillahi wa lirrasool idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. O ye who believe, Give your response to Allah and His Messenger when they call you to that which gives you life. إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ We have to change the way we respond to Allah and His Messenger. And then when we look at the examples from the companions of the Prophet wasallam, we see a great difference between how we respond to the Qur'an and the Sunnah and how they responded to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. There are many examples of this in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, the verse of prohibition, when alcohol and intoxicants were prohibited. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a caller into the streets of Medina and he said, Ala inna al khamra qad hurrimat, Ala inna al khamra qad hurrimat, Ala inna al khamra qad hurrimat. Indeed, intoxicants, alcohol, wine, and, and, and the likes are now have, have been prohibited. And when the companions heard this, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said, I was in the house of Abu Talha. And some of us were drinking, others were pouring, others were lifting the cup to their mouths. And when we heard the prohibition, immediately we stopped. Not only did they stop, 
Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said, they went to the containers and they started pouring all of the wine into the streets of Medina until the, until the streets of Medina were flowing with wine, as Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said. And did they stop there? They didn't stop there. They continued and they went to the containers that they used to use to put wine in. And they smashed the containers because once it, was, it has been prohibited, they no longer wanted to ever go back to it again. But there are some people nowadays, we make repentance and we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people they say, oh, you know what, I'm not going to listen to music anymore. And so let me put all the CDs away. Why are you going to put the CDs away? So then maybe later on you're going to change your mind? No, you got to change, make that conviction to never return to it again. You have to make the intention and the conviction to make a permanent change, not a temporary change. Make a permanent change in your life for the best. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he prohibited something, the companions never wanted to touch it again, never wanted to come close to it ever. Once the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a ring, a gold ring on the hand of, on the finger of a companion. And previously in the khutbah, he had held up gold and silk. And he said, إِنَّ هَذَيْنِ حَرَامٌ عَلَى ذُكُورِ أُمَّتِي These two things are prohibited for the male of my ummah, gold and silk. And so he saw a ring on the hand of one of the companions, and he took it, and he tossed it. And so he said, why would one of you want to put the ember of fire on his hands? Why would any one of you put something like that on his hands? And so he went away, and that companion also walked away. This is a gold ring, it's precious metal. It's haram for him to wear, but it's not haram for him to have. He can sell it, he can give it to his wife. It's precious metal, but he just walked away from it. And the other companions who saw the situation, they said, why don't you get your ring? Do you know what he said? This is gold, brothers and sisters. He said, Wallahi, by Allah, la akhuduhu abadan wa qad tarahu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By Allah, I will never touch it again as long as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has already tossed it. And this is how they were. I'm not talking just about the men, even the women during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ saw a woman and her daughter, and they had two thick bracelets of gold on their hands. And he said, do you give a tu'tina zakat a hadha? Do you give the zakat of this gold? And she said, no. And, she, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Would you like Allah subhanahu wa to change that into fire on the day of judgment? And so, imagine if this happened during our time, if the Imam saw someone with a large bracelet of gold and said, Do you give the zakat of this gold that you're wearing? Right? A pious woman from amongst us will probably say, Oh Imam, I, I really, I, do, I have to give zakat on this gold that I'm wearing? Right? And so, Yes, you do. If the Imam says, yes, you do. What do you think a pious woman amongst us would say, would do? This is a very thick bracelet of gold. The pious ones amongst us, amongst us would say, Oh Imam, how much do I have to give of it? Right? And she would give the zakat from that gold. But listen, what, what happened during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, listen to what happened. During the time of the Prophet ﷺ, immediately upon hearing these words from the Prophet ﷺ, the woman took off the bracelets, both of them, and she said, these two are for Allah and His Messenger. These two are for Allah and His Messenger. And this is how the woman, during the time of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, were. were. And how they responded to Allah and His Messenger. Not only that, even some of the things that the Messenger of Allah did not prohibit, 
They wanted to be so much like the Prophet ﷺ that they wanted to do and like whatever the Messenger of Allah ﷺ loved also. Whenever the Prophet ﷺ had a ring made for him, all of the men in Medina, they asked for a ring to be made for them also. They had a ring made for them also. And on another occasion, when the Messenger of Allah ﷺ came to Medina, he was staying in the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari had the privilege to host the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he brought food over to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then when he came back to collect the dishes and the utensils, he saw that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not eat from the food. And so he asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Aharam and who? Is it haram? And so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No. He said, It's not haram. Akrahu. The Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never complained about food. He never complained about food. He, I, I, Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Ma'aba Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ta'am and qat. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never complained about food. If he wanted to eat it, if he liked it, he would eat it. If he did not, he would just leave it alone. He never complained about food. And but this food that Abu Ayyub al-Ansari had just brought for him, it had garlic. It had garlic. Garlic is not haram. But the Prophet ﷺ did not want to eat it. Why? Because he always wanted his mouth to smell good because at any moment, any time, Jibreel could come down with revelation. And so there was a specific reason why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa did not eat that. And so he said, I dislike it. I don't want to eat it. Abu Ayyub al-Ansar radiallahu anhu at that moment, he said, by Allah, O Messenger of Allah, I dislike it also. Subhanallah. Immediately. Do you think he disliked the food that moment, just a few moments before that? I mean, if you had a guest like the Prophet wasallam, would you give him anything except for your favorite? Would you give him anything except for something you loved? Something that was the best thing that you had? You would not give someone of that status, anything except for the best or your favorite. His favorite after the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I dislike it immediately. He said, by Allah, wallahi, I dislike it also. That's how the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were. And sometimes when we hear there are things that are prohibited for us, we hear that there are things that are prohibited for us, we are sometimes saddened by it. We say, you know what, if only Allah would allow riba, we would be rich like the Jews. Also, right? We'd be this, we would be that. I wish that was not haram. It'd be really nice, huh? wouldn't it? What we don't realize is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. He knows what's best for us. Whatever has been prohibited is harmful to us and it's not good for us. Allah ya'lamu man khalaqa wa huwa latiful khabir. Does he not know whom he has created? And is he all subtle, all aware? Does he not know what's best for us? Whatever Allah and His Messenger prohibit, it is not good for us and we should abstain from it. We should never go close to it. Don't ever regret and think, oh, I wish that was halal. No, Allah knows what's best for us. And we should love whatever Allah and His Messenger love for us. And vice versa also. And this is a condition of iman. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by Himself. In the Qur'an, Allah swears by the sun and the moon and the stars and the day and the night. And He can swear by anything He so, he so wills. For He is Allah. He swears, وَالشَّمْسِ وَالْدُحَاهَا وَالْلَيْلِ He swears by many things. But when he swears by something, it's to signify the importance of that thing and at the same time, to emphasize the statement that's coming up. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah swears by Himself. When it comes to Iman and surrendering to the will of Allah and His Messenger, He swears by Himself, not the sun and the moon and the stars. And so how important do you think the next phrase is?
to us. Allah says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما Allah swears by himself and he says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكْ إِنَّا by your Lord, O Muhammad. لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They shall not have faith. They shall not believe. حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Until they make you a judge in all their disputes amongst themselves. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا And they find no resistance in themselves whatsoever. وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا And they surrender to it with the fullest of conviction. You should not have faith. By Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, By your Lord, O Muhammad. Allah swears by Himself. And so when we make a change, we have to change with the fullest of conviction. And we have to read that in order for us to strengthen our iman, to strengthen our communities, to strengthen our families, to strengthen our ummah, we have to start with ourselves. And we have to change in the way we respond to Allah and His Messenger. Most of us, when we, went, when we say, we, Inshallah, I will, I will be better after I make Hajj. Inshallah, after I graduate. Inshallah, after I, uh, inshallah, after, uh, after I finish school. Inshallah, after I get married. Inshallah, after I get, I, I, I'm 40 years old. And so forth. Inshallah, inshallah. It's never inshallah right now. And that's the difference. We're always procrastinating. We're always saying, inshallah, tomorrow. When is tomorrow coming? And do you have tomorrow coming for you? Are you promised to see the sun rise again tomorrow? There are people who are younger than us who have passed away, and people who are more healthy than us who have passed away who are not sick. What makes you think you're not the next person? And who has promised you that? To say that inshallah after I'm 40, after I get married, after I finish school. And so the time is right now. The only time you have is right now. The only time you have promised for you is the present. And so make that intention right now and that conviction to change for the best. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون عبد الله بن رواحة radiallahu anhu was coming to the masjid. He was walking to the masjid, and there were some people in the back of the masjid, they were standing up, just like right now. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ijilisu, everybody sit down. Everybody sit down. Abdullah ibn Ruwaha was still outside the masjid, but he heard a familiar voice, and it was the voice of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ordering people to sit down. And so he sat down, he did not take another step outside the masjid in the sun. 
You know why? Because he was afraid of going against the order of the Prophet ﷺ. His first instinct with that's a familiar voice. That is the voice of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ on the minbar. And he's telling me to sit down. So he sits down outside the masjid without taking another step. This is how the companions were. When it came to the orders of Allah and His Messenger, it was immediate. And that is why when they raised their hands, Allah sent the angels to help them. When they asked for rain, when they dropped their hands, rain came down right away. Why? Because the quicker you are in responding to Allah, the quicker Allah is in responding to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, and there are many a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِدَّةِ Know Allah in times of ease, and Allah will know you in times of hardship. And then you start to wonder, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, why is Allah not responding? Because when Allah orders you to do something, you don't respond to Him. When Allah says it's prohibited, you say, Inshallah, and tomorrow. Inshallah, after I finish my mortgage. Inshallah, after I graduate. Inshallah, after I make hajj. Inshallah, after I get married. Inshallah, after I'm 40. Inshallah, after I retire. That's how we are. That's how we are. But that has to change. And that has to change now. At this moment, at this time, let not a single person amongst us in this masjid right now leave this masjid except that he has made the conviction in his heart, Ya Allah, whatever I hear from you, Whatever I learn, I am going to follow and be obedient. Because you know what's best for me. But there are many amongst us, we want to do something. And so we start asking this shaykh and that shaykh. We say, shaykh, is this haram or is it halal? And the shaykh says, haram, I don't like it. Let me go ask another shaykh. And then you wait for another shaykh to come and you ask the same question. You ask 10 people, you're bound to find somebody who's going to say it's halal. But you know it's wrong. You yourself, deep down inside, you know you shouldn't be doing it. But you're going fatwa shopping. Brothers, this is not shopping. You're not going to the mall here. I don't like this color, I don't like that color. This is your deen. This is your goodness in this life, your success in this life and the hereafter. It's dependent upon that. And then you wonder, now hopefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to cross that sirat just like a flash, just like lightning. But you know why people go slow? It's not because they, are good, they have good acrobatic skills. It's not because they work for the circus so they can cross the sirat. No, it's because of their deeds. It's because they're quick in responding to Allah and His Messenger. Just like a flash, when they hear Allah and His Messenger tell them to do something, they do it right away. When they hear Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, they come to the masjid right away, not watch football on TV and wait, let me see, wait till the game is over, no. This is how we are nowadays. And that's why the Prophet wasallam said, the nations will come and will fight and compete with each other to plunder you. Just like a group of hungry people fighting for a platter of food. And so the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they were wondering, how could the non-Muslims do this to Muslims? أَمِنْ قِلَّةٍ نَحْنُ يَوْمَيْذٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Is it because we are so few in number, O Messenger of Allah? Is it because we're so few in number? The Prophet ﷺ said, No, on that day, بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَيْذٍ كِثِيرٍ You will be abundance, you will be many. On that day, 
You'll be large in number. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَاكَ غُثَاءَ سَيْلٍ But you'll be like the foam, just like the foam on the, on the side of the river, on the side of the water. You blow and it's gone. It's nothing. One billion strong, or one billion weak, I should say. We have a lot of males, mashallah, but where are the men? We have so many people, billion, over a billion Muslims. But everybody is like a foam. It's not numbers. It's not numbers. The people before shook the world, and they were few, but they were men. Because they responded to Allah and His Messenger. The Qur'an hasn't changed. We have changed. So let's change in the way we respond to Allah and His Messenger. Let's really repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ O you who believe, give your response to Allah and His Messenger. إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ When they call you to, إِذَا دَعَكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ To that which gives you life, that which strengthens you. So if you didn't get anything in this khutbah, then just take this verse. You want to strengthen yourself? You want to change? Change the way we respond to Allah and His Messenger. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم أتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداءك عداء الدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. استو استقيم وتريد صوت صفوفكم تراسو. Straighten your legs, shoulders, shoulders, and feet. Feet don't leave any gaps between yourselves. الله أكبر. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى وما خلق الذكر والأنثى إن سعيكم لشتى 
فأما من أعطى واتقى وصدق بالحسنى فسنيسره لليسرى وأما من بخل واستغنى وكذب بالحسنى فسنيسره للعسرى وما يغني عنه ماله إذا تردى إن علينا للهدى وإن لنا للآخرة والأولى فأنذرتكم نارا تلظى لا يصلاها إلا الأشقى الذي كذب وتولى وسيجنبها الأتقى الذي يؤتي ما له يتزكى وما لأحد عنده من تجزى إلا ابتغاء وجه ربه الأعلى ولسوف يرضى الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم غربا غربا